India should win this World Cup. Not because they have won 10 in a row to Australia's paltry eight. It's quite simple. They are the best team. If you compare them to Australia, India have better pace, spin, a fifth bowler, and batting. Australia have a slightly longer batting lineup and more power in it, but that's kind of their only two advantages. India is the better team in better form, in better conditions for them. The bookmakers say that India are a 70% chance of winning. That implies that Australia will win 3 out of 10 times. That seems fairly optimistic. But it did make me wonder, if Australia were to win, which is certainly still possible, how would it happen? This video is brought to you by Wicket Cricket Manager. This show was made by HCL Tech, a company that believes in partnerships so much you can read their name on the Australian shirt. This show leans in hard on data and technology, so we are proud to work with HCL Tech, leaders in their field. Option one, Australia bowl first and go nut. There are two obvious ways of winning from this position. The main one would be from Mitchell Stark and Josh Hazelwood just to destroy at the top. Now, Stark was in pretty bad form right up until the semi-final, and then maybe the cold cutter clouds helped him a little bit. But even so, if he and Hazelwood, who has had a decent but not sexy World Cup, have a party up at the top, Australia could run through enough Indians to put pressure on them. The problem might be with this plan that they need a lot of wickets and early on, because there is no one in the Indian top three they want to get away from them. So they have to really push hard to force an utter collapse. That means they will need Zampa and Cummins to take wickets as well. Essentially, they bowl so well that they don't actually need their fifth bowler at all. Or at least, roll India within 43 overs and keep the score under 220 and allow their top three to attack when they go out with the bat. But obviously, it needs to be a little bit clearer and more efficient against India. Option 2. Australia bowl first and restrict. They will have to take some wickets to restrict because India is just too good otherwise. But they don't have to come all at once. They could keep pushing India to take a few risks. They already have the advantage of it being a final, and they could try some creative usage of their part-timers, like Marcus Stoyne and his bowling bounces around the 50 to 20 over point. Let's say they keep India to 280 or 300, or I suppose the better way of putting it is 20 to 40 runs under par. Then they encourage Warner Smith and Minus to bat as long as possible, and the rest of the players have a go around them. Now, I do have some issues with this. Australia has shown no real defensive flair with the ball so far. And as far as defensive bowlers go, Hazelwood and Maxwell are pretty much all they have. Zamba occasionally can be very tight, but usually takes a lot of wickets. And Stark and Cummins have gone for plenty in this tournament. Also, if they do restrict, that still means that India will have put on a decent chase for them. And based on how Australia have batted recently, I'm not sure about them chasing. The Afghanistan chase was a disaster saved by a miracle. Bangladesh was good, but this team was already out of that game. If you look outside the World Cup over the last few years, they had a chase against England where the top order helped them, and another match where Maxwell saved them. If we're being honest, those seem to be almost their only options in larger chases. Option 3. Australia bat first and whack. This is probably how the current team works best. Warner as a quick scoring anchor, Head as a disruptor, and Marsh as a battering ram. The last three years, Warner averages over 60 at better than a runner ball against India. Marsh almost averages the same with a way better strike rate. Head has runs against India in test matches and obviously can bat pretty quick. If one of them has a day, that could be handy. But if two or three of them get going, then Australia is capable of scoring a huge total. The question is, can they do that against an Indian team that is so good at striking? However, in eight of their last 23 innings batting first, they have scored at more than seven runs and over, including a match against India. So they certainly have the firepower to do this. But most probably, it's going to have to be the bulk of the top three and a little bit of Maxwell later on. But remember that India's batting lineup is incredible. Along with New Zealand, they're probably the two best teams actually suited to chasing decent totals. But if Australia put on a lot of runs, chasing it in a World Cup final is not going to be easy. Option four, Australia bat first, score above par, and take some early wicket. I don't see any way that Australia can bat first and make it under par or even probably just a par score and still win the game. Of course, perhaps the World Cup final brings some strange results, or India has a couple of runouts. All these things are true. But chances are that Australia will probably have to make at least 20 or 40 over par. If they do that, and Stark or Hazelwood take early wickets, it does actually change the dynamic quite a bit. They probably still need some middle wickets to keep the pressure on. But you can see a way that that could work for this team. And also, to be fair, it is much easier to get wickets when you're in a World Cup final and you have set somewhere between 280 and 300. 
Option five, Maxwell. I don't know how to explain this fully, but Glenn Maxwell is a mysterious master of mayhem. And so there is always a chance that he does something that just wins this game. It is probably an innings, but hell, I don't know. Could be catches, could be wickets or runouts. Although he's not quite the mover in the field that he once was. But there is a hitch in this. In part because Maxwell has struggled with Jasper Bumrah. In ODIs, he averages 30 against it. But in T20s, it's only 10. If Maxwell is going to be in at the end scoring really big for Australia, he's going to go right up against Bumrah. In the death, which is more like a T20. And this has happened before. When India played the Australians in Canberra, the teams are actually very different. Certainly neither side had anywhere near their best 11. But Maxwell was shepherding the chase when he backed away to carve one and Bumrah went straight through him. Those are obviously the major storylines of how Australia is most likely to win. I mean, what I've said there is all very clean, of course. Australia is also capable of some messy wins that no one can predict. But what about the micro detail? Like, what little battles do Australia need to win? One would be that they should bowl as much left arm finger spin as possible to Virat Kohli. Is it too late to call in Ashton Acre? I think certainly Stark needs to swing the ball back in against Shubman Gill, and you could also argue that Josh Hazelwood probably should be trying to nip it back as well. So if they can't nick Coley off early, I think they will try and bounce him up. Mitchell Stark needs to swing the ball back into Shubman Gill, and Josh Hazelwood needs to bring it back in but off the scene. There is absolutely no doubt that Australia will bounce Shreya Sire. Probably the best option against Rohit Sharma is just continually bowling your best ball. He's going to come at you anyway. Hold your nerve, keep bowling good balls, and see if he makes a mistake for once. Against the Indian bowlers, they need to ensure that there is at least one left-handed to face Ravi Jadeja. They cannot have him just bowling to right-handers over and over again. Also, Australia scored more than a runner ball from Mohamed Siraj already, and he slipped up in that last match. If they can take down one of these two completely, India are left with Virat and Rohit's bowling. But even if they can't get through to India's break glass in case of emergency bowling, Scoring high against two of India's five might be more than any other team actually managed at this World Cup. So that's it. That is how Australia could win this World Cup. So how could India win this World Cup? I think their best chance is turning up with 11 players. <laughs>